Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. My name is Alexandra Alvarado, and I am AAOA's Director of Marketing and Education. So glad you can all make it here today. We have a fantastic presentation waiting for you. We're going to talk about these really awesome enterprise grade technology tools that can help boost your NOI. Uh, we have uh, some tech experts with us today that are really doing some innovative things for the rental industry, and I'm really happy to have them with us. But before we get started, I just want to go over a few things. One is this whole thing is being recorded. So don't worry if you miss anything, you'll be able to see it tomorrow. I'm going to send you an email with the recording link and also the PowerPoint slides. And you can go ahead and print those. Um, we'll also have questions at the end. So, you know, we love questions. So make sure you put in your questions in the question box and not the chat. Uh, the question box just really helps us to organize the questions. So please be sure to put them in there um, as you think of questions even. And then at the end, at the when we're done with the presentation, we'll start going through them and we'll have a little bit of a Q&A panel. Um, so let's go to the first slide here so I can introduce you to our speakers today. So we have with us Daniel Sharabi, the CEO of Livable. Uh, Daniel has been in this space for quite a while in um, technology, providing specifically benefits for property owners, property managers, residents, and the environment. Um, Livable is a utility billing company. Uh, so it is actually quite an innovative thing what Livable is accomplishing today with helping landlords of all kinds uh, and property managers bill their tenants for utilities. Um, Annette Gallagher is the director of content at Livable. She's written some awesome articles. You've probably seen some of her work in our magazine or our newsletter, always talking to us about how we can conserve utilities, bill utilities to our tenants the legal way. Um, and she's been uh, the director of content for about a year at Livable. And uh, she's really helping us with some really great tips. And today we're going to dive into not just utility billing, but also some other opportunities that you can take advantage of. So I'm going to pass this all over to you guys to get started with the presentation and uh, I'll get off screen while you do that. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much. We're very happy to be here. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you have seen that the last five years have brought a flood of technology platforms and tools that are dedicated to the independent rental owner. Um, you know, enterprise level operations, big companies have had access to these sorts of tools for a long time. And they are amazing tools, but they're also out of reach for independent rental owners and smaller property management companies. Uh, there's just no return on the investment for smaller companies because the tools, they, they come with a cost, a cost of development and a cost of deployment. So those have left uh, small in, small businesses and independent rental owners juggling spreadsheets and lists to manage their businesses. Cloud technology and software as a service, also known as SaaS, have changed the game for the better. Software updates are deployed automatically, which reduces the maintenance cost for your platforms and the amount of time involved. You never have to worry about, do I have the, the latest version? Am I missing a security update? It all happens automatically behind the scenes. Even better, a lot of these platforms are low and even no cost to owners, and they can include everything from property management and accounting to solar billing sharing and water leak management. Before we dive into the property management platforms, I'd like to have our first poll question put up, please. All right. So first poll question is, which of these utilities do you include with rent? Uh, so there are quite a few listed here, uh, water, sewer, trash, Wi-Fi, or none of the above. Um, I'm guessing those of you that are saying none of the above probably don't bill at all for utilities. Um, if that's the case, uh, you know, we'll go over some ways. Maybe you can start considering that. Um, but these are some great options here. So I'll give it a little bit more time for the rest of you to participate. All right. So we have more than half of you participating. So let's go ahead and see what we got. All right, those are the results. Looks like uh, the winner is trash. 
uh, followed by water and sewer. Is that kind of in line what you see all on your on your end at Livable? Yes. Yes, nice. absolutely. When when we talk to independent rental owners about do you include utilities with rent, a lot of them don't even think about water, sewer, and trash as a utility. It's just something they've done for so long that they don't think about it as, oh, maybe this is something I could be recovering. Interesting. Okay. All right, so the first um, section that we're going to talk about today is property management platforms. And all property management platforms are not created equal. Uh, there are tons of them out there. And these are a few that um, that we have, have come across that we think are uh, have awesome features that uh, have a real value for, uh, for independent rental owners. We're, we're not endorsing anyone over the other. And for that reason, we'd like to focus on some of the special features that each one has. They have a lot of commonalities. They're, they're all about property management. But each of the three that we're going to talk about, which is Azebo, Inago, and Renter Insight, also have uh, specialties, which is really cool. The slide is not advancing. We're having technical difficulties. Hang on just one second, please. Okay, here we go. So Azebo is the first platform we're going to talk about. And Azebo is unique in that it has an entirely from the ground up custom accounting system built in. It is truly free to property owners and managers. Azebo makes their um, income from selling value added services to tenants, including renters insurance and some other services, but it's truly free to property owners and landlords. The folks at Azebo decided that um, a lot of the off-the-shelf accounting systems that are available today simply are not meant for the investment property owner who rents out properties. So they created from the ground up a bespoke accounting and financial management system that's designed for the needs of the independent rental owner. It integrates with your existing bank accounts and also has its own suite of financial management tools if you prefer to go that way. Uh, when tax time rolls around, as it inevitably does, tax time is easier with Azebo because they can take all of the expenses and sort and categorize them. If you own four or five properties, you can have those expenses already sorted and categorized to each individual property, even out of one primary bank account um, with Azebo. They are tailored for businesses with one to 200 units that they rent out. Uh, for each of these, we've put a, a little screenshot in of, so you can kind of get a, just a general feel of, of what the tools look like. Um, but Azebo has really uh, separated itself out as specializing in that um, unique accounting. Inago um, has a very cool niche that it specializes in student housing. There has been an explosion in the cost of student housing um, on campuses around the country, which has in turn put pressure on the student housing market in the surrounding communities. So Inago has developed features that accommodate that student housing, including working with parent guarantors, which no other platform offers, and being able to break rents down to single bedroom and shared common space. So if you've got you four bedrooms and one is significantly larger than the others, Inago can calculate what the rent for that room should be as opposed to other rooms in the house. So how cool is that, that they can literally drill down to what each person's share should be? Inago is also absolutely free to housing providers and they, um, similar to Azebo, generate income from tenants paying for their screening, online payment services, renter's insurance, and other value adds. Inago also will market your rental listings to more than 15 different sites, and they are committed to being green, so everything is in the cloud. You never have to have paper to manage or worry about a college student misplacing their lease. Renter Insight has taken a little bit different tack they really want to offer enterprise level tools for smaller independent rental owner businesses. Their sweet spot is five to 10 units being owned and managed. And they understand that once you have five or 10 units, you're probably employing 
a management company part-time, perhaps a professional manager full-time. And so with Renter Insight, because they are looking at that enterprise level of tool, you can set up levels of access for those managers as well as for the owners. So each person only has access to the tools that they need to do their jobs effectively. Unique to Renter Insight among the tools we're discussing is a full service communication platform that lets you reach all your renters at once. If your renters prefer to be reached by text or email or both, you can simply log into Renter Insight, go into the communication platform and message all of them at once. If you only have one or two tenants, it's easy enough to just pick up the phone and text or call or send an email. But once you have 10, it becomes a bit of a, a, a chore to do that. So Renter Insight has enabled that capability so that you can reach everybody at once if there's a, a service outage of some kind, like a, a gas line problem, or if there's a major weather event coming, or some other community event that you simply want to let everybody know about, you can do that easily. They have a really robust dashboard that lets you see information about who's coming up for renewal, who's put in a maintenance request, and a whole lot more on just one screen. They also, like um, Inago and Azebo, have robust accounting and reporting. And Renter Insight offers all of this for only $99 a year, which works out to just around $8 a month. Now, before we get into another uh, category of tools, if uh, we could get our second poll question, please. All right, uh, are your units subject to rent control? Uh, this is interesting because as you know, California is basically statewide rent control now. So, you know, we have a lot of members in California. So I'm assuming the yeses here will be on the higher side, um, it's it's not every unit in California, but I I mean, if you have more than one rental property, then you are under rent control in California. Uh, so let's see what you've all answered. I think we are at 80% uh, participation, so that's great. Let me go ahead and end the poll. There you go. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, still the majority of you on on no. Um, it's coming soon for those of the, you that answered that. Um, yeah, we're definitely seeing that trend on our end. I mean, rent control is not just a California thing. Uh, we're seeing it even on, you know, bills in places that we never imagined would even consider rent control. So it's definitely trending. I think you're going to start seeing it a lot more, even if you don't have it yet in your area. All right, I'll let you get to it, Annette. All right, thanks. So the next set of tools that we're gonna talk about are not property management as such, but they are definitely important to getting the most out of your rental property investment. And those are Dwellsy, IntelliRent, and RentCheck. Very cool tools here for you. So Dwellsy connects landlords and renters. It's a two-sided marketplace. And Dwellsy came about because the, uh, the founders of Dwellsy realized that when you look for a home to purchase, you can always see all the MLS listings in your area. But with rentals, nobody had that. Uh, before Dwellsy, it, uh, it pretty much tapped out that about 10% of rental inventory was available on any platform. And they are the first to have significantly more than that. And we're talking about four to five times bigger than industry leaders. So they currently have about 30% of the rental inventory in the markets that they're in, and they, they do operate nationwide, 30% um, on a single platform, which puts your listing in front of a lot more of the tenants that you want and also gives uh, renters a lot more options. They do partner with property management software, so you may see them integrated into other tools. They are also completely free to landlords. There is no cost to list and they um, they run ads on the platform. That's how they make their revenue. Um, and those ads were served to about 2 million renters in 2022 and they're only growing. Uh, they've been around since about 2019. And um, like I said, they, they really wanted to give landlords a place to list 
that wasn't thousands of dollars a month with a 12,000 12 month commitment. They uh, really wanted to give consumers and landlords the ability to get what they wanted at a lower cost in, in terms of finding those, uh, those units. IntelliRent is an entire back office in your, in your back pocket. It automates a lot of the tedious tasks to remove the friction of leasing and deliver the renters you want. They have a smart match technology that shows you your ideal renter. You can attract, screen, and approve reliable renters in less than 24 hours. They have a suite of tools that allows you to create customized applications, even renter resumes. And they are also free to um, owners, to landlords. They generate their income from applicants paying a fee to, you know, to apply for the amazing places that they include in their listings. They also market your listings for you. And those are deployed to 80 websites, which is really great, especially when you consider that, that it's entirely free to you. Rent check is, um, is I think personally, one of the, the cool, cooler of the technologies that we're talking about today. Um, rent check was born out of a gentleman, uh, Marco Nelson, who's the founder and uh, co-founder and CEO. He bought his first rental property right out of college. Um, as an officer in the Navy, he would move around a lot. He would buy a unit where he was living and then would rent them out when he was reassigned to another station. So he became a part-time landlord, but was always remote. And he realized that, um, he was paying people to inspect his units, to be able to be, you know, that remote landlord. Um, and as a software engineer who built mobile apps, he realized that he was in the perfect position to combine his passions into a new venture. So RentCheck was designed for remote owners. And the entire point of RentCheck is to eliminate disputes over deposits. It's a mobile app that lets tenants photograph the property at move in and move out from within the app. They cannot upload photos to the app. They have to use it to take the pictures. So the pictures are all timestamped, which means there's no way to fudge the condition of your property, therefore eliminating those disputes over deposits. Uh, remote landlords can also use it for their maintenance and landscaping teams as proof that work needs to be completed and that, that it is done. It is free for the first 10 units, which encompasses a lot of independent rental owners in the United States. And then it's $5 for each unit after that. All right, well, our last category is about um, conservation and utility savings, but I believe we have a third poll question. Yes, we do. Um, have you had to raise rent to cover increased utility costs. Um, I mean, from what I've heard, the utilities have gone up virtually everywhere. So I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of you say yes to kind of recoup some of those costs. It's It's been tough on everyone, I think, um, in the last, I mean, what do you say in the last year or two, It's you've seen more of an increase? It's been like the last five. Yeah. Def definitely. Definitely. There's been some big spikes, mm -hmm. uh, 21, 22. All right, well, let's see what you all responded with. Yeah, so as I suspected, the majority of you have raised rent to cover that cost about 67% of you, um, and then the rest have not, which means if you haven't, you, you're probably eating that cost, um, unless you're maybe already charging for it separately. So we'll see. Or in, in the case of some markets, you weren't allowed to raise the rent to offset rising costs because of moratorium on rent increases. For oh, that's so true. That is so true. It did happen around the same time too. So yeah, yeah I might've been stuck there on a little bit of a loss for some of you. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that brings us right into utility savings and conservation. Uh, con conserving resources saves us all money in the long run. Um, the less we use, the more we save. And promoting conservation efforts is also a fabulous marketing strategy, especially if you're trying to reach younger renters. Uh, a lot of millennials, a lot of Gen Z folks have um, already made the determination that they are lifelong renters. And when they're looking for properties, they are looking for places that uh, align with their values. 
it's not just about a convenient location or a you know the right amenities. Uh, conservation is is part of the package with them. So it's good for everybody. And what's great for the planet is great for your wallet. So we're going to talk about a few um, a few tools that help you save money and make the planet a better place at the same time. And the first of those is Now I Water Sensors. Sorry about that. So Now I makes finding leaks faster. According to the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, a full 12% of water use in the United States is from leaks. And in multifamily housing, that number can soar north of 20% since residents often do not report or repair leaks like they might in a single family home. The average apartment unit wastes over $76 of water a year. So if you're talking about a 40 unit multifamily property, that's over $3,000 each year, literally down the drain. So now I um, sensors are a solution to that, to that water loss. They strap onto existing water meters and monitor use. So then when there's a spike that indicates a leak, the Now I system sends out an alert with not just the fact that you've got a leak, but what that leak is going to cost in actual dollars. There is no Wi-Fi or power needed. Uh, their sensors use long life batteries that last approximately seven years and it's DIY install. You don't have to hire a plumber. You don't have to have anybody come out to do this. You just strap it onto the water meter. They use the innovative helium network, which is basically an unused cellular network to send data to the cloud so they don't have to tap into your Wi-Fi. There are other systems like this that do make use of your Wi-Fi. And that's always a little, you know, uh, security squeamish for, for folks to have an, an outside entity tapping the Wi-Fi. So now I doesn't do that. They simply use this cellular network. You're, as a homeowner, you then get alerts through both email and text. And one of the cool things about Now I is that it takes the resident out of, a, out of the conversation. The resident doesn't have to worry about, oh, should I report this? Am I gonna get blamed? Am I gonna get in trouble? They're simply gonna be, it's, it's a data issue. The data is showing that water use has increased and we're just here to fix it. So that's a really, uh, really nice feature as well. And because, 70 to 80 percent of multifamily apartment water leaks come from toilets. Now I is also working on toilet specific sensors so that you don't even have to go. You, you find out there's a leak at the property. You know exactly where it is coming from and go straight to that toilet, switch out whatever needs to be changed and solve the problem before it's a big problem. Um, the cost is $499 per building for the sensor and then $99 a year subscription. Simple Sub uh, is another sort of water meter and it is also DIY install. It just clamps on the pipe as you can see in the, the, the image here and it uses ultrasonic tech to measure the water flow. Uh, it works with most types of pipes, PVC, copper, a few other acronyms I didn't recognize, but it does work with most types of pipes and it uses that same sort of cellular connection. So there's no Wi-Fi or external power needed. Same idea, maintenance free with an eight year battery life. Um, they don't have a minimum order. It is $329 per meter. So if you've got a four unit you know, building that needs one of these for each one, you're talking about roughly $1,400 to get started. And then it's $5 a unit per month uh, for the subscription. But this does bill tenants for their actual usage. There's no, um, there's no question. This is, this is what the meter said you use. And you can bill tenants through Simple Sub or consolidate it with other services through a third party. And they do offer volume discounts as well. Anything to add there, Dan? Just that Livable is one of the third parties that can can integrate and handle the billing if if need be, okay. uh, and we know the folks over there at Simple Sub and it's a quality product. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I will say in California is that is it is not an alternative to this the uh, required sub meter through Senate Bill Seven. 
Uh, and so it, you'd still technically be billing using a more accurate you know, ratio method, but you cannot, as a developer building ground up, there are requirements to install submeters as of 2018. Uh, this is uh, not an alternative to that, to that meter that needs to be approved through weights and measures. Uh, but it is you know, a, a great alternative for properties that are uh, not subject to Seneca 7. Okay. Ivy Energy is another uh, newer player in the market and offers a unique opportunity for multifamily properties to add solar to the property and then be able to uh, sell that energy to their tenants. So it is, it is software only. They do not actually do the, um, they, they don't actually install the hardware, um, but they allow this, and this has never been, uh, never been done before. They allow for um, your multifamily building to install solar and then be able to accurately bill each of your units for their energy use. Uh, property owners handle their own installation so that they can leverage whatever local financing, incentives, um, however they choose to do it. And IV Energy is so big on uh, making sure that, that homeowners do get those incentives for solar panel installation, that they have a tool on their website that helps folks find incentives. Uh, every year, more than $20 billion is allocated for real estate incentives from every level of government, from city, county, state, federal. And over 50% of that goes unclaimed because people just don't know that it exists. So IV Energy, as part of their mission, helps make sure that, that homeowners are able to take uh, take care of, uh, take advantage of as many of those as, as, uh, as you can, which again, what, what's good for your wallet is good for the planet. Um, so, and they do have a, a recommended network of installers and contractors that they've worked with that they trust if, if folks need that. Uh, the one thing about IV Energy is that it is only available in states with independent power producer production laws. Um, now, I know that a lot of the folks we're talking to today are California. So California is one of those, as is Colorado, Hawaii. There are several others. Um, they're hoping to expand nationwide as more of that legislation is implemented. Uh, but for right now, they do have you know, limited, um, limited outreach. And their software is $8 a month per unit that is um, billed by the landlord or a third party. And then it, uh, it shows your tenants what you're charging them for that solar generated power versus what they would have paid through a uh, traditional utility. Um, and so they also then help uh, generate uh, actual cash flow for owners by unlocking that energy revenue for multifamily tenants. Yeah, and just to add to that, Ivy will uh, typically recommend that uh, that the house, meaning the ownership, absorbs a uh, sort of a, a goodwill portion of the bill, which gets buy-in from the resident base, guaranteeing that they'll pay no more than they would have to the utility provider. I did see that Stacy posted uh, a chat worth everybody taking a look at. I did, I did hear about some pushback. I don't, I don't know that any final ruling has been done. Always worth looking at, you know, other solutions that are out there. It seems like PowerTree may be one of them. I'm not sure PowerTree does the billing uh, in the same way uh, in terms of, you know, putting a virtual net meter on tracking real routing, routing of usage and, and billing for those kilowatt hours uh, used. So uh, either way, you know, great, Stacey, thanks for introducing, you know, an alternative and, uh, that's, you know, never a bad thing to have, uh, a full, a full set of, uh, options out there. So, all right, I'll, let's talk about livable the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, we, uh, focus, uh, on a, on a utility billing approach that leverages a ratio method. Although I will say that we can bill for sensors like, uh, simple sub or even using installed submeters, it just so happens that uh, those devices can be cost prohibitive. And so most uh, of our prospects and customers opt for a ratio method, which leverages uh, effectively any variable, uh, any methodology, which could be occupancy for the case of water, sewer, and trash. Uh, you know, that's under the premise that 
two people will consume a certain percentage more than one and, and so on and so forth. But the system is super dynamic and, and actually does allow for uh, the billing of, of any utility or amenity uh, using any methodology, whether it be occupancy, square footage, by unit, percentage, et cetera, um, and at any frequency. Uh, and so, you know, billing monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, you know, et, et cetera. And uh, we've been around since 2009 uh, and billing for, you know, a long time and, and lots of markets that uh, have had fluctuations in terms of uh, utility rate increases, although in the end, the rate, the rates will always go up, it seems. Uh, and so the product has just gotten, uh, you know, more and more popular. And what we came to find uh, was that uh, the independent rental owner, similar to the theme of this presentation, the independent rental owner just didn't have great options for this or really any options other than trying to do it themselves on a spreadsheet. And so while we had this full service offering and we we're working with larger management companies, uh, we were, uh, you know, allured to bringing these solutions down market. And what we did was build a self-serve tool similar to what you're seeing with these other softwares that we presented today. Uh, we heard from our independent rent owner customers that they wanted the tools at their fingertips. And so we built a, a software that allows them and you to uh, add your property, uh, enroll your residents, set your parameters in terms of customizations, could be custom fees, could be billing methods, uh, could be specific utilities or opt-outs, could be specific amenities by unit, because we try to bill as fairly as possible. We are factoring in those amenities um, as there'll be a varying usage based on whether or not someone's got a dishwasher or an in unit laundry, for example. Uh, and so we allow the, the end user to process the billing uh, and the residents get a great portal where, where they can log in and view the month over month billing. They have full transparency into the total bill, how it was divided. Uh, that leads to you know, a sense of accountability that goes beyond just having to pay the bill, right? And, and so there's visibility into what's going on at the property. There's visibility into the, the fluctuating bill. Uh, you know, as their behavior modifies, they're rewarded, uh, you know, so long as, as that bill goes down and isn't offset by, you know, another rate increase, for example. But uh, it's, it's uh, a model that we've seen work, you know, we've been doing this a long time and, and across the board and the net's been tracking figures as well. We're seeing that uh, you've got about 20 to 40% varies on property size, reduced consumption, uh, post program installation. And it just makes sense. You tie a residence usage to their wallet, they're going to use less. And so they're moved to conserve, they're moved to report leaks, they're moved to, you know, engage uh, the property. And as, as Annette mentioned, uh, sustainability is, is, is not a trend. I mean, it's here to stay. It's part of the, the fabric of the, the next generation and what their expectations are as it relates to doing business with, uh, you know, or, or buying a product or even renting a unit. And so, you know, what, what might have been seen or considered, uh, you know, an imposition or a burden, right, a, a resident paying for the utilities that they use uh, is now uh, empowering and emboldening them to, to conserve and do their part, so to speak. Um, I'll touch on the property management portal. Obviously, you know, you, you want to have a dashboard as well where you can, uh, you know, manage your assets. You can uh, see the accounts receivable, you can send balance reminders, you can run pro formas uh, and, and leverage the calculator to you know, see whether or not uh, underwriting for a new purchase uh, you know, makes sense considering rent and utilities. Uh, you can also uh, track numbers on you know, a vacancy and, uh, and make a determination about where to set market rent given that you're now going to parse out the utilities as opposed to include them. And so we give you, you know, a great set of tools uh, to manage all of that. Uh, this product is moving swiftly toward becoming a platform where it, it plays nice with, you know, virtually all of the tools that we presented today and more. And so uh, we're, we're coming to find that the expectation is there's a flood of these technology companies that are trying to solve problems for you, which is amazing. Like it's, a, it's there's, you know, you could arguably say there's never been a better time to be a housing provider. That's if we forget about the onslaught of legislation that's coming down the pipe. But, but as far as the technology that's, that's being uh, established and built to help you better do your job, um, you know, it's, it, there's just a flood of them. And so the idea is that you want a consolidation, you want these systems to talk to each other. And, uh, and that's, 
that's actually an expectation on your part. And so we're doing our part in that regard to, you know, make inroads into these partnerships and, and try to ensure that there's, uh, there's, you know, a, a sort of thread, you know, connecting you know, each of our systems to make your lives easier at the end of the day. So uh, yeah, we'll move on from the, the manager portal on that. As mentioned, uh, residents can, uh, you know, view pay bills, they can set up auto pay, they can send in a check, uh, they can get a paper statement if, if, uh, if they, you know, opt to do so. For example, we know a lot of, uh, a lot of our, our customers have residents that just don't provide emails. And so what's the alternative is we'll send paper, we'll allow them to pay over the phone or, or you know, by check or, or money order, what have you. Um, we have uh, alerts here. They can contact, you know, management with uh, with a leak alert. Uh, they can report an occupancy change. They can report, you know, or request a move out right through our portal, which uh, you know seems basic. But as you start to grow your portfolio, the you know having a a central place to manage some of this stuff. If you don't have a management software, um, you know, we we decided some bells and whistles should be introduced to help with those items, uh, especially because they they all affect billing in in some way. We also have a blog and uh, what we call Conservation Corner. So we're kind of put our energy and our money where our mouth is while billing is, you know, our core offering and what gets our customers most excited. Uh, we do have education as well as a part of what we do. And it's not just that cute little conservation tip that's, you know, uh, on a rotation at the top of their profile. We also publish blogs for them. Uh, we have a build out of curriculum that we'll be releasing and we'll be gamifying conservation. And so there's going to be a constant engagement uh, around educating residents to do their part. Uh, you know, immediately in the near term, that might lower their bill, which benefits them. But ultimately, you know, as citizen of the world, uh, hopefully they'll, they'll feel more empowered to, you know, use less and, and, and you know, obviously do their part as, a, as it relates to conservation. So. Yeah. And before... Uh, before we get into our uh, Q and A, um, I believe Alexandra has one last poll question. Yes, actually, I have two. Um, I think uh, this one you all are gonna gonna like. It's essentially if you would like uh, Livable to send you a free recovery calculator, so you can find out how much you're leaving on the table, and they can email that to you. Um, again, it's free, so. If you want, they could send that over. I think that's a really useful tool that you all have um, to kind of estimate uh, what you could be recovering from using utility billing. Um, it's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I add to that? Yeah. So it's 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 not as simple as just saying you know you'll recover up to ninety percent. Meaning, as an owner, you absorb some of the bill. The calculator allows you to break that down by unit by resident based on the factor like occupancy, which matters because you can't just, as you know, flip a switch and turn this on across the property. That is unless everybody's month to month and you can give 30 or 60 day notice. But typically you'd have just done a rent increase for someone. Maybe you have one vacancy, but everybody else is gonna stay status quo for the time being. And so Livable does give you the option to sort of waterfall and phase this in. And that calculator is gonna be really helpful because you know, you want to know specifically what that vacancy might earn you so that you can set your market rent. And so, yeah, we'd love to send that that over and kind of get the get the wheels wheels turning for you to 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 hopefully, you know, help realize some upside there. Yeah, fantastic. And I know we have uh, questions up, so we're going to be asking some questions. In the meantime, I'm going to leave up a uh, last poll question here. If you did want to schedule a discovery call with Daniel, Annette, their team, they can go over specifically how you would be able to recover uh, your utilities. And uh, I mean, it is like you said, uh, Daniel, it's like very much so a case by case basis, right? Kind of depends on you know, your vacancies, your setup, what state your rental properties are located in, all of that. So yeah. call can really help to clarify some of that. I'll leave that up and please put in your questions in the question box. I know we got a couple of uh, questions already. Diana asking, what is the cost of livable? Uh, so we can maybe dive into that. Yeah. So, so the, uh, we have two models, right? We have a full service offering for a larger management company. Uh, and then we have our, our sort of pro solution, which is self-service. I'll, I'll focus on 
the ladder and it's it's five dollars per right. unit per month uh and that can actually be and of course it depends on the market uh that can actually be technically be resident paid you know we have our own opinion on whether or not you should be doing that and that does depend on where you do business uh, but ultimately it's legal and above board that that administrative fee can be passed along. So in other words, like a lot of the solutions we presented today, technically our software could be free to you. Um, and so that's, you know, something to consider. A lot of our customers are splitting that fee in half. Some of them are absorbing it entirely. It kind of depends on how much of the utility bill they're billing back and what the reimbursement looks like. And so those are things you'll want to consider as you're running your, your calculations. Um, I did see another question about uh, writing the lease. I just want to make clear that we mm -hmm. provide a suite of tools. So there are notices, addenda for markets as specific as Hayward in Los Angeles, all the way to a national addendum. And so we've had our legal team draw up, you know, all of those uh, legal docs to make your lives uh, easier as it relates to implementing, you know, this program. And so you've got sort of that compliance box checked uh, as you roll the program out. Yeah, it looks like that was a question that that Robin had about, you know, uh, what would be suitable for short term rentals. I don't yeah. know if you saw that. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, what, what is your thought on that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So so obviously this is a, it's a great play for uh, we talked about rent control earlier. I mean, if, if anybody's in a rent control market, not 1482, right, not statewide California. And I hate to double click and go hyper specific, but. Uh, you know, these, these types of, le this legislation is sort of coming to a city near you in some form, and there's a huge spectrum, right? California doesn't rule on utilities. It lets you decide if you want to build it separate. So it's really not prohibitive. You know, you can technically actually uh, introduce it mid-tenancy, as long as they're on month to month, they're up for renewal, as opposed to say a city like Los Angeles, where you have to wait for lease inception. So if anybody's in a market where you'd have to wait for lease inception, like a Los Angeles or Santa Monica or Pasadena or Santa Ana or Oakland or San Francisco. And I, I hate to say it, but the list is getting longer. You're going to want to do this to your, you know, and implement the program and give notice uh, or, or incorporate into lease, uh, you know, as you market the vacancy, basically, because the time is of the essence and you don't want to get stuck paying for a rising utility cost for the life of a tenancy that may last a decade or longer, right? So um, that's kind of the caution or the, the red flag that I'm throwing and saying, hey, you know, there's urgency here, especially in those markets. Um, but as far as short-term goes, uh, we've got the, the functionality is there. The system builds in arrears for actual utility usage, but what it does is it leverage a daily proration. So in theory, if you had short-term, whether it were days, weeks, you know, months, you could leverage the program to facilitate billing. I guess part of the attraction of, you know, short term is that it's kind of all typically bundled and they don't need to worry about it. But what that leads to is really irresponsible usage. And so I mm -hmm. like connecting the dots on maybe it's, you know, a short term market that needs this most. Right. I mean, think about even, you know, any of us at a hotel. Right. You tend to not be as concerned, even though they put the signs mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, about your towels and your water and what have you, because it just sort of feels like this is one or two days I'm going to use what I need to. Although I've gotten a lot better at that, you know, I even maybe crank, start crank that AC stuff. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly, right? Or you know, you kind of stop at the door on your way out, and it's like, oh, the AC is on. Do I leave it on? I'm going out, and you know, I've again gotten better at going back and turning it off. But yeah, uh, you know, this is this is the mindset. This this modification of behavior is exactly what we're trying to inspire. Um, and you can do that through billing and education. And, and so, you know, that's the hammer home point for us. Yeah, I have seen a lot of um, like corporate housing, short term kind of rentals becoming a lot more popular. Um, and that's an interesting market as well, where it's maybe just, you know, a few weeks, a few months. Um, so that's, that's very interesting that you mentioned that. Um, Donna has a question. She's saying, does uh, SB7 in California require a separate meter for each tenant? And do you have that service? Can I implement it in Sonoma, California now? Yeah, so, so Senate Bill 7 uh, only applies to properties that are built after 2018. And so technically and legally, if your property was built prior to then, uh, you do not need to submeter. If you wanted to, we do have a partner that installs, manages the sub uh, maintenance, and we just do the billing. 
And so that's an option for you if you wanted to have kind of the exact usage as opposed to a, uh, a ratio bill, which, you know, is inexact. It's accurate and they've been in the ratio billing over time has been compared to submeter usage uh, and it's super comparable. Uh, I mean, that's how we landed on the formula that we have, right? It's based on a, an analysis of historical data. Uh, but the short answer is we can absolutely implement in Sonoma. Um, just so happens that our COO uh, is is in Sonoma. And so we're oh. <laughs> workout based. And so it'd be easy for me to get north and and maybe meet out at a winery for a tasting and talk about. <laughs> that's a good excuse. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, Hard Deep asking, how is Rubs handles for Section 8 tenants? Yeah, that's really uh, a really tricky one. And it uh, depends on a couple factors. Typically, uh, the assessment is that you can't necessarily get more uh, funds from that that tenant, right? There's an there's an allowance, there's a utility allowance, and there's a rental allowance. But the argument is that you while you may not be unlocking more you know revenue from that unit, uh, but th that you are promoting reduced usage by billing them. And then seeing that bill, feeling that bill, you know, there's there's a certain uh, impact that that has and that they'll use less as a result of that. And that you could save, you know, 10, 15 percent across the board if you incorporate it there. Now, I will say there are other uh, sub markets I've seen where uh, it's written into the Section 8 agreement that they can be billed for utilities and we are operating, you know, in that market. So I think that's, a, you know, hard to that's going to kind of depend on some specifics and we have a, mm -hmm. a team member on our sales team that is an operator and has worked in section eight and so you know she'd be happy to chat with you about you know the specifics of of your market and how we can help yeah that's great to have actually someone on your team with that experience um yeah. and i know i saw you answer this uh oh, follow-up question from hardeep before we move on if section eight is only 10 percent of the building does it affect the other tenants so the way yeah that's a good question i think if applies to um, how the allocation takes place. And so uh, what really what really happens is the bill gets allocated or apportioned to the relevant units based on the factor. It might be occupancy, might be square footage, might be you know percentage, as I've mentioned. Let's just assume it's occupancy. And so the Section 8 residents that, that represents 10% of your building would be assigned a portion of the bill, whether or not you actually bill them. One depends on the legality, which is something we can talk about separately. But Two depends on preference, right? And so same applies to, you know, your uh, mother-in-law that's living in one of your units. You, you can flip a switch on and off to opt them in and out of billing of a specific utility or of any utility. And so you have the autonomy and the authority to make those decisions so long as they're in the lease, right? You definitely don't want to start, you know, making changes and modifications to someone's uh, uh, tenancy and be at risk of reducing services or, or what have you. And so you wanna make sure that you got that language in the lease, full transparency, and that the methodology is all disclosed. That's why we provide the addendum for, for that reason. So uh, yeah, there's no risk of kind of, you know, unfair housing if the Section 8 residents can't be, I guess, don't quote me on that, you never know. But I mean, the, 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 the assessment we have from legal is that there's no risk uh, because the, the terms of the, residents that are being billed are clearly stipulated and, and the Section 8 residents might not be subject to those terms. So, okay. yeah. Okay. That's really great response there. Um, Hardeep says, thank you. Uh, Donna wants to be connected with your Section 8 person as well. So we could do that offline. Um, I did see, uh, Dan, that you had responded to Carlos about this renter insight, $8 per month or eight per month for as many units as you have question. And then uh, you, you responded up to 20 units. If you want to expand on that a little bit for the rest of the audience. Yeah. So I think everybody thinks there's a catch when they hear free. Right. And, and I think the renter insight business model is instead of going free or freemium, freemium, meaning part of the system is free and, and upgrades or certain features might generate revenue or might cost management. Um, I think the renter insight, you know, model is, uh, establishing a price point right from the start and they bundle. And so there it's a volume based model where pricing uh, goes down uh, as, as you add units. And so there's no uh, disclosure on what the pricing looks like after you hit 
the 20 units. I think that's, uh, you know, something, a reason to talk to sales with render insight there. Uh, and I think the same applies for us, by the way, if we start to get into, you know, a, a high ticket tick of units, then we're, uh, our pricing gets their incentives built in as well. So just important to note that. Of course. Yeah. I do love how scalable it all is, which is really nice. Um, so I don't see any other questions coming in, uh, but it, I will give you guys a little bit more time if you want to uh, put that in there. In the meantime, I will just reiterate that tomorrow I'm going to be emailing everyone the uh, slides, the recording. And of course, if you did opt in for either the calculator or um, any sort of um, you know discovery call, we will connect you with the correct people at Livable so they can get you going on that. I'm so glad that you all joined in. And uh, I mean, I definitely learned about a couple new tools. I think what's amazing, and you said it, Dan, is, I mean, we're essentially living in a renaissance of tech for the real estate industry. So, I mean, it just makes sense for us to start looking into many of these, pretty much a lot of them are free, actually. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, they're right there for you to use. I highly encourage you to use them. Um, and uh, you're welcome, Hardeep. He's saying thank you for putting some great webinars up. So, uh, and, you know, really, we have our, our speakers to thank because they're the ones who come in with such wonderful knowledge to share. So thank you, Dan and Annette, for your time and your insight into this industry. Um, it's so valuable. And uh, we'll we'll be connecting you with our attendees after this uh, webinar. Thank you yeah, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And we'll, we're going to keep interviewing companies out there doing cool things and, and we'll, we'll keep sending articles your way and keep you informed about, you know, innovations in the industry and how they fit in with making your lives easier as operators and uh, help you better run your business. So thank you Love all. It. And, you know, have a great day. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.